Uh, we'll just finish uh, day three, first day in pads today. Uh, guy was a bunch of fun. The guys had a ton of energy and got to look competitive at the end, which we're trying to create. And we got a c- competitive group. Um, and so, you know, it's a typical spring ball, man, some back and forth, offense making plays, defense making some plays. And I, I do feel like we're making strides, some real growth in regards to uh, development of this roster. We got a lot of veterans running around out there and excited, uh, excited the way we're headed. Questions? Jonathan, what, uh, what was the primary thing you wanted to accomplish this week? Well, it started with really the establishment of some fundamentals per position in the first two days. You know, when you're practicing just with helmets, um, there's fundamentals to play in every position. And so starting on, uh, on the ground level there. And then uh, a lot of the offense or schematics offensively, defensively is a lot of first and second down thoughts. So a lot of our run game uh, got, got in and some of the, the base pass protections and on the defensive side, just com- some core coverages that'll be for us from the mainstay. And then we'll just add to those packages as it goes. Is there uh, any, I mean, you get asked this question a lot, I'm sure, but anyone catch your eye physically just the first few days of practice that, Right. You know, I think I, I, our tight end position stands out. I think where Luke and Tegan are at physically um, are impressive and they're, and then they're veterans for us and showed up even today. Luke had a couple of nice catches. I think they've been a force in the run game. It's hard to, to, you know, go across the, the board. I, I feel that at a lot of positions, um, but those two guys physically where they're at uh, looked good today. With all the continuity that you guys have coming back on the offensive line, just how much better does that position, how much more solid does it feel than maybe at this time last year? Yeah, we do. We feel like we got some uh, experience there, uh, challenging those guys to improve their game, not just kind of stay where they're at. I do feel like we got a couple young ones up and coming that are going to push for some playing time. Uh, Thomas Seal had some great reps today in one-on-ones and in the run game and you know, so we do got some uh, experience that we're counting on, but we're also challenging the, not just the old line, the, all these guys that have experience of finding a way to improve because it's really, it's easier for the younger guy to make steps and improvements because they're starting at a lower level. It's a lot difficult, more difficult for guys that have played three years, started multiple games to continue to fine tune their game and, and make huge strides in improvement. Is there anyone else that you could see kind of push those five returning guys for the starting spot? And how does Bloomfield kind of mix into all of that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he uh, got some good reps today for the first time kind of in pads with us. Um, uh, he adds to that and we'll challenge um, in, in, in interior spots, but I think he's got some flexibility if we needed him to, to play tackle. I mentioned Thomas CEO already uh, of where uh, I think he could be pushing for playing time also. Jonathan, what yes. was most noticeable today just with uh, having the pads on compared to maybe the first two days that we saw? Yeah, I think the competitiveness during the team period when you're running plays and actually, you know, you guys are popping and, and moving around. We we ended with a little bit of what we call play it period where we put the ball down and just play uh, and it got pretty spirited. And and so um, it was an awesome Saturday, just being back around as a group, the energy going, coaches having fun. You know, there's humor, competitiveness gets a little chippy. We're back to it. It, it was a blast. Uh, obviously, uh, Jim has got some issues with his Achilles. Who's <laughs> helping him out right now? Well, you know, Ryan Payne, our offensive graduate assistant, he's been here for three years as well, been uh, Jim's right-hand man the whole time. And so uh, Payne would be helping him coach whether Jim was physically able or not. I mean, Jim's getting some things done. Uh, you can hear his voice from a long, long ways away. And so that's why we put him from the far corner to try to keep him out of the way. Sorry if you were to answer this the other day. Is Elijah Jones already on campus and in the mix? Oh, yeah. Yeah. EJ made a, a couple of pass breakups today. Uh, he's been moving around really well. What kind of, I mean, player is he? Is, is he the Sean Wright type who's going to be that kind of big physical corner? Yeah, he's got some length to him. There's no question. He can move. And so we, we're counting on those big corners being able to cover, and he can do that. Um, and so it's going to take him a minute to learn this new scheme. There's a couple of new techniques uh, to, compared to his previous places. But um, from what we've seen so far, he's going to help us. Uh, don't really care about that. You know, guys are missing a few practices here and there, but is there anybody that that's been out that, that looks like they'll be out for the rest of the spring at all from this week? Uh, you know, James Rawls has been out and there's a chance he could miss the, the whole spring. Um, just minor, uh, lower body type thing, nothing, you know, season ending or whatnot, but we're going to be pretty careful and smart with him. And so depending on where he's at, 
uh, late April here, but that, there's a chance he can miss the rest. How was uh, how's, how's Jeremy Reichner? Um, he you know he he didn't obviously wasn't there in the fall. And yep, yep. He's had a lot of injuries. What how's he bouncing back? Yeah, he's moved around pretty well. It's actually uh, laughing with him today in, in stretch before we got started. Just kind of getting the rust off because he hadn't had some pads on for a while. Um, but he was out there and got some quality work today. Along the same line, Jonathan, uh, any updates on Addison Gums? Do you think we'll see him at all this spring, or is he kind of more towards the fall camp? You know, he did some individual. He's moving around. He doesn't get into the team periods quite yet. And so, yeah, you potentially could see him. Um, but, uh, again, we're just going to be smart. And and he will get some work. It just comes down to the 11-on-11 11 11 periods. We're, we're going to be pretty selective with that. What do you, you want to accomplish next week? Well, we're going to probably scrimmage for the first time at the end of next week. Um, and so just to implement some schemes, getting guys confident and uh, establish their fundamentals and, and then uh, and, and let them play and, and see some live tackling. I think always early on, you look for, you know, competition and adding to your depth. But you're also focused just on each individual guy taking a step step in their game. Uh, and so that's our approach, like what we're doing in special teams right now. We're not doing a bunch of 11 on 11 punting balls or kicking off. We're doing so much of the individual techniques that come in special teams play. Um, and that's the focus, you know, each week of guys taking steps in their game, making it competitive, adding to your depth, and then we're going to let them play at the end of the week and see what, see what it kind of looks like. I, I talked to, to Brian before um, spring, and, and we were talking about um, Tristan Jebbia. He, he, he said, you know, that even though, you know, he's not really going this spring, you know, what he did, what he showed last year really counts a lot. Do you kind of see it the same way that even though he's not out there – this spring, he's you know what he can do, and and whatever these guys do during the spring, you know he's still, he's not going to lose his place in line, I guess, for lack of a better term. No, what he did in the fall counts for sure. And you looked at you know he was playing his best ball right before he before he got injured, and so that that counts. Um, obviously, you know missing spring ball holds him back a little bit, and those other guys are going to continue to work and get reps and get more comfortable on the offense, and so. But once, you know, Tristan's healthy and ready to go, he's going to get every opportunity to come fall camp. And we are confident that we can win games with the guy under center. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one for you. Can you hear me okay? My audio is kind of messed up. Yeah, got it. Okay, great. Hey, Coach, my question isn't actually geared towards spring ball. It's actually about the name, image, and likeness bill being considered by the Oregon legislature right now. Jaden Grant spoke out at a Senate hearing on Thursday in support of the bill. I'm curious your thoughts on the issue and if you feel there's a change that needs to be made in favor of student athletes. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm a huge fan of Jaden and uh, and his voice and, and I appreciate how much he looks into to issues and totally support him. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of the bill, but I know we do support uh, college football in general here at Oregon State of, uh, you know, our players being able to benefit from their name, image, and likeness. I know we support that. I don't know all the ins and outs of the bill on on things, and I, I understand there's some complications with it, but we are 100 percent uh, supportive of Jaden, our players, and in college football, name, image, and likeness, and being able to benefit from that. 